Uncle, your breath is getting cold. How many more times do I have to tell you? Still in a half with the wide world, are we? Well, wouldn't you be? I've missed the bargain of a lifetime. And all my friends can do is laugh their heads off about it, as if it was some kind of joke. Well, have you asked them why they were laughing? Oh, yes, I have, Mother, I. Well, what did they say? They just laughed all over again. Oh, sometimes I think the look on your face would make a cat laugh. It wasn't the look on my face they were laughing at. It was something that they knew about that I didn't. What could that be? Oh, I've got a fair idea. I would never have thought it of them. And they call themselves my friends. Are you going to tell me this dark secret, then? Snedden must have known about that bloodstock tap, Mother. I don't see why. Well, he must have known something or he wouldn't have bid so high. The man knows next to nothing about sheep. Oh, maybe he just outbid you purely out of spite. No, no, I don't think so. He must have known the value of the beast. But how could he have? Morag Stewart, that's how. Oh, do you think Morag is likely to do Snedden a good turn, do you? Morag would do anything to get back at me. There is no end to the treachery of women, Mother. This stuff's cold, Mother. Uh, can I have a mammalie, please? Yeah, sure. Mm. The black pudding and tomato under the grill, Sandra. No, thanks, Aunt Isabel. Aren't you having any breakfast? Oh, sorry, oh, Mr. Ferry, sorry. You know, I think she should give the ferry a miss after that row with Sheila. It may not be as serious as she makes out. Could you dramatise things so much? Well, it was pretty serious. Daddy thought so. And you told me I was imagining things. Well, you are. So is Sheila. It would have been better to go and speak to Eddie myself. Well, why didn't you? I just don't think Sandra should be spending all day and every day with a... With, with a married with... man. Well, that's what he is. You're losing your sense of proportion, Isabel. She never had one, David. Haven't you learnt that yet? Look, can't either of you see Eddie and Sheila are having some kind of a problem just now and Sandra is making things worse, far worse. But Isabel, you both told me over and over what a decent bloke young Eddie's turned into and that Sheila is largely responsible for the change. Ah, uh, it's true. So it is. So all the more reason then to speak to Sandra. Oh, please, David. Oh, you should know how tongues start wagging in Glendara. <laughs> that won't bother Sandra. Bother a couple other people, though. Oh, I'm sorry, Isabel, but honestly, talking to Sandra would do more harm than good. You know what teenagers are like. Well, she's not doing any harm. David is right. It'll spoil the lass's holiday. And uh, she needs one right now. She's got a lot to face up to when she gets home. A lot to face up to? Um, <laughs> Brian means starting out in a new job, you know, becoming a wage earner, that kind of thing. Yeah. Suddenly they're not school kids anymore. <laughs> So, what are your plans for this morning, then, David? I thought I'd go up to the big house. Time my arrival for tea break. <laughs> oh? Yeah, I haven't seen the inimitable Archie for a while. Not for you and I either, come to that. And from what I hear, this may be my last chance, since they say that Miss Fiona may be leaving Glendarry. Suppose you mentioned you might call in there when you were around at Lorna's the other evening. Yes, I did. In fact, it was Lorna suggested arriving in time for Elevenses. at least say something. Like what? You've been like this ever since you brought that girl back. Oh, you mean the friend I invited home for a meal? Home? That's a laugh. I'm not laughing. It doesn't seem like home to me either. Well, it didn't prevent you from bringing your girlfriend here to have a meal cooked by your wife. She's not my girlfriend. Oh, really? And you're not my wife. Well, you're not, are you? So why all the jealousy? You won't have me. But nobody else is to have me either. I just don't understand. No, I don't. And you know, Sheila, I've given up trying. Lorna. Hmm? I heard you had a visitor the other night. Oh, yes. Aye, David Blair. Yes, it was nice to see him again. I thought you didn't expect to see him when he was here. 
I didn't. We bumped into one another in the street, and I asked him out. Just bumped into each other. That's right. Did uh, he bump into you, or did you bump into him? Archie, what are you on about? Oh, nothing. Oh. Still married, is he? Yes, and very happily too. Now, look, Archie. Well, now, I'm it is not. Oh. Yes, Fiona. Yes, yes, of course. Have you not got any work to do? Have a seat, please, Wilma. I want to thank you for the help you've given me since I've taken over the estate. Oh, well, uh, thank you. I was only doing my job. I hope I've always given satisfaction. Yes, but it's much more than a job, though, isn't it? And it's practically a way of life, Lorna. Yes, I suppose it is. For Archie, too. I can't imagine running the place without you and Archie around, you know. Well, I'm relieved to hear it, Fiona. I wasn't thinking of looking for another job. I'm making a mess of this. Huh? Lorna, I wanted to talk to you about my business methods. The thing is... When I took over the estate, I needed the work to keep me occupied. As a way back into the world again. Well, that was perfectly natural. You'd been very ill. Well, the thing is that the, uh, the work scared me. Did it? I don't think anyone noticed. <laughs> Suddenly being responsible for all those people's lives. I had no idea how to make contact with them. And while I've been ill, I've been so remote from everyone. I suppose I found it difficult to change that. So I took a leaf out of my mother's book. Be polite, but aloof. <laughs> She's mastered the art of perfection. But it doesn't seem to be working quite so well for me. You mean you're feeling a bit out of touch? Yes, yes, that's it exactly. Lorna, there has to be more communication around here. Well, that sounds a very good idea. Since my decisions about the estate are bound to affect people's lives, I really ought to give them reasons for those decisions. I think everyone would welcome that, Fiona. The thing is, I'm going to need your help to get it right. I'll help you all I can, and that's a promise. Thanks. Oh. Uh. Glendarrick Estate. Oh, hello, Mum. Yes, I'm fine. How's Edinburgh? Today? There's nothing wrong, is there? <laughs> fine, all right. I'll see you later, then. Yes, bye-bye. Mum, she says she's driving up here later. <laughs> On business. She didn't sound very business-like to me, though. Lady you, Lachlan. Aye. It's not often we see you at Letter Fallock. So what do we owe the honour? It's about that tap, the one you bought at the market. Fine-looking beast, eh? Aye, it is that. Here, would you like to make me an offer for it? You could have it for the market price, plus it's a wee bit to cover my costs. I couldn't afford a price like that, man. Never mind your costs. What do you want, then? Who told you that beast was a bloodstock? A bloodstock, is it? Boy, so. Somebody must have slipped up. You knew fine that that tap wasn't a commercial. All I want to know is who put you wise to it. Well, let's just say uh, a wee birdie told me. And that's all you're going to get out of me. <laughs> I 
feel responsible in a way, you know, being Sandra's aunt. I know you must have had a very unpleasant evening, and I just wanted to say... There's no need to say anything, Isabel. She's young for her age. Spoiled, of course. Look, I started it. Well, she can be thoughtless sometimes. It was my fault. I was horrible to her. I don't know what got into me, but I just couldn't bear Eddie being so nice to her the way he used to be with me. Oh, there's absolutely nothing between them, Sheila. You do know that, don't you? Oh, I know there isn't, but I feel as if there is. I shouldn't have married Eddie. I should have known it wouldn't work out. Oh, come on now. All couples go through a bad patch every now and again. We just did, I dare say you notice. This isn't a bad patch, Isabel. It's for good, I know it is. Well, you don't know anything of the sort, Sheila. It's just, it just seems that way because you're so newly married. It's just a lover's quarrel that's got out of hand. You can't quarrel with someone that won't speak to you at all. We aren't lovers and we never will be again. I ran away to Glasgow once before. I'd be doing Eddie a favour if I went there now, for good. Oh, I'm fine. How's yourself? <laughs> Very well, really. Good, good. Eh, uh, Lorna's not here at the minute. Yeah. She said it would be best to come in time for Elevenses. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, Lorna's having her Elevenses upstairs in the flat with Miss Fiona. Really? Well, I never thought they got on that well. <laughs> Neither did I. But all of a sudden, they've become as thick as thieves. That is woman for you. Ah, uh, you don't mind if I hang around a bit before she comes back? Not at all. Have a pew. Eh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, wouldn't you mind having a word with you, David? Ah, oh, what about? But Lorna, something wrong? I'm very fond of Lorna, David. Yes, of course, and so am I. And I wouldn't want to see her getting hurt. Something is wrong, then. Well, the only thing that's wrong is that you've started running after her again. Now, that is not a good idea. I am not chasing Lorna. <sighs> so what are you doing in Glendara? Oh, for heaven's sake, Archie, I came to visit my brother. Oh, pull the other leg. Look, I know it sounds corny, but Lorna and I really are just good friends. Oh, hey. Honestly. You were at our cottage the other night. Yes, for a drink and a chat. Anything between Lorna and me was over and done with long ago. I wouldn't hurt Lorna, and I wouldn't hurt my marriage either. Helen and I are getting along fine. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. You'll be up here on business then. Is it some work to do with the new marina they're planning? No, I told you. Just taking a break. Without the wife. All right, Archie. I'll give you the real story. I came to Glendarek to find out how things were between Brian and Isabel. I got the feeling that they might be splitting up. And you don't think that's in the cards, do you? What made you think that? One or two of the letters recently struck me as, well, odd. Not because of what they said, more because of what they didn't say. Aye, well, to tell you the truth, uh... Brian and Isabel were like cat and dog for a while, but that's all over. Now they seem to be settling down again. Well, I hope you're right. Hello there. Oh, good morning. All right, I've been pitching up here for a couple of nights. Well, that's not up to me, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry, my mistake. I thought you must be the gamekeeper. Aye, I'm the gamekeeper. On this side of the fence. But you're on letter Falachland. You'll have to go up to the house and get the factor's permission. But they're, they're no likely to mind, though, are they? Well, I wouldn't know about that. You can always bring your tent over to this side. I've got no objections, if you're careful. I might oblige to you, but uh, I've got it pitched now, and I'll just leave it where it is. You know, the house is just through these trees. I really do think you should have a word with the factor. Yeah. 
That smells good. I'm starving. I want to talk to you for a minute, Sandra. What about? About Sheila. Now, I went round to see her this morning, and that poor girl is in a dreadful state. So what's new? She admitted that she'd been very rude to you. Oh, that's big of her. Do you not think you might have given her some cause? No, I don't. How could I? I hardly said two words to her the whole evening. Well, do you not think that's cause enough on its own? She was your hostess. Look, I could see by her face that she didn't want to talk to me. And that friend of hers, Carol, she wouldn't speak to me either. You're not even trying to understand, Sandra. Now, how would you feel if you were newly married and another girl was hanging around your husband all day? I'd wonder what I was doing wrong. What makes you so sure Sheila's doing anything wrong? Eddie's face, that's what. He's as miserable as sin. Anybody can see that, including his wife. It's time she did something about it. Well, you could do something about it too, young lady. You could stay away from Eddie and give the two of them a chance to get over whatever it is that's wrong. Stay away from Eddie? Well, what good would that do? At least I'm company for him. At least I make him laugh. Sandra? I could do with a hand in the shop this afternoon. Well, ask Dad. Maybe he'll help you out. I know you're going to think I'm a right old sweetie wife, but uh, I happened to know that Rudy was going to ask you something yesterday. So I took the liberty of phoning him to find out how you get on. I hope you'll forgive me, Fiona, but I've known you and Rudy for a long time, and I'm very fond of you both. Look, I know it's got nothing to do with me, and I, I realise it was of a personal nature, but Rudy sounded it's a very non-committal in the phone that I, I thought there might be something wrong. Between Rory and me? Well, there isn't a hope. Mr Watson, if Rory was non-committal, it was because I was non-committal. Oh. oh, I see. I had to be, in fairness to Rory. Until I know what my mother's plans are, I'm really not in any position to make any of my own. You think she might be coming back to Glendarrow? I hope so. But if she doesn't, I'll need to stay here and hold the fort myself. I'm sorry, if you want to, but Glasgow's not so very far away, and you've had factors looking after the estate before. Mr. Watson, we haven't needed a factor since we got the estate back from the Mara Corporation. No, Glendarroch is part of our lives. One of us has to be here to look after it. Oh, and what kept you then? I was beginning to think you weren't coming. Sorry. You're not getting cold feet, are you? What about? I thought you were going to drive it all the way over today, remember? Oh, yes, of course, I remember. Right, you untie it there then. Okay. Off we go. You know, I thought you'd be here bright and early, raring to go. It's all right, you know. I mean, if anything goes wrong, I'll take over. It's not that. Is it then? Nothing. Probably means it's something pretty stupid. If you must know, Aunt Isabel's been getting at me again. About? That row I had with Sheila. She says it's all my fault. Well, it wasn't, OK. Well, you wouldn't think it to the way she's going on. Anyone would think I was trying to get off with you or something. Stay away from the jetty. Why don't you help me out in the right, shop? Right, anyway, you're going to have a shot at selling her. It's all yours. Just keep it that way. Eddie. What? Am I stopping you and Sheila from sorting things out between you? Aunt Isabel says I am. Well, you're not, OK. Look, Sheila knows how to sort things out if she wants to, but she doesn't. So that's that. What Bob and I can't understand is, is how Sneddon got to know about that tap in the first place. Well, Dougal is quite convinced that somebody must have told him. I just don't see how he could have got wind of the affair. <laughs> Dougal thinks it was more I that told him. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> well, that was clever of her if she did. <laughs> Imagine scoring off Sneddon. <laughs> well, that's as may be. Dougal says she did it just out of spite. And he's in a terrible huff about the whole business. Well, that was the whole idea. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but here, I was sorely tempted to tell him that there never was a bloodstock top in that lot. Oh, no, no, no don't do that. Oh, hello, Alice. Hello. You know, it's a strange thing about women. They can never drink a cup of tea on their own. Oh, ah, that'll be right. You'll not be wanting a cup, then. Oh, well, uh, Just as well you don't, for there's none left. Oh. 
Are you any nearer finding out about who told Snedden about that tip? As near as makes no difference. You mean you know? I saw Snedden this morning. Oh, sir. Who was it then? It was Morag Stewart, just as I thought. Did Snedden tell you that? He told me that a wee bird told him. Now, what bird could it be but an albatross like Morag? Hello, darling. Well, how are you? I'm fine. And you look marvellous. Edinburgh obviously suits you. Thank you. How's Dad? He's very well indeed. He couldn't get away, but he sends his love. Well, you sounded very mysterious on the phone. Is Dad about to be made a judge or something? Oh, no. Well, not yet, anyway. Pity. But Uncle William says he will be one day. Well, Uncle William's probably right. He usually is about these things. You didn't come all the way from Edinburgh to discuss Dad's career, though, did you? No, I did not. You came to talk business? Yes. Family business or estate business? <laughs> Is there usually much difference? No, not usually. Fiona, I do feel guilty about leaving you so long in the dark, about my plans for the estate, but... it really was very difficult to come to a decision. And you have now? Yes. You remember when Grandfather Paddy died, the estate was almost ruined by death duties. Well, I remember it broke your heart to have to sell the land then. Yes, it did. And I'm absolutely determined that when I snuff it, as Uncle William oh, would probably Mom, what say... what a morbid subject! No, no, I'm not being morbid, Fiona. I'm being canny. Now, your father says there's a perfectly sensible way of avoiding death duties. So... I can hardly refuse the advice of a future judge now, can I? And what advice is that? If I gift the estate to you now, as long as I don't snuff it for the next ten years, you won't be burdened with any capital transfer tax. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I know all this must come as a bit of a shock, but... Well, I also know how much you love Glendarroch, and... Well, it always was going to belong to you someday. 